previously on the Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. What is Karuma? The name of the Asogi clan's famous sword. A razor sharp blade known to all, passed on for generations. It embodies the Japanese spirit. It's not known to me. <laughs> well, well, I never heard of it. <laughs> I didn't vote for it. And now back to Le You know what? I, I don't know. I, I don't even know what to say. All right. I don't know what funny thing I can do at this point. Okay. We've been doing this joke for what? Like eight games now? There's something at people. I've been doing this for eight games. I don't even know what to say anymore. Okay. I'm done. I can't, I can't even think of any more funny shit for this game. I can't add love any more stuff with this game when I'm so invested in this. <laughs> Sorry. This game's so freaking good, okay? I don't give a shit. I'm going to say it till I'm red in the face. Are you tired of hearing it yet? Well, it's too bad. You're not going to stop hearing it. You're not going to stop. Hell! Sneak up B. Back with some more of the Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve. We last left off. Oh my God, so many revelations, so many things. And then I go and ended it in the most obnoxious place. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I know. I know that was a terrible place to end it. But I wanted to leave some of it in there because I wanted it to be... I like to have a little bit of a climax to it, right? I don't want it there because there's a little bit that comes after the trial. And I don't just want to make an episode out of just that, all right? It wouldn't be this exciting, all right? We're going to have a little bit of anticipation. I did this dickheaded move, this dickheaded cliff air for you guys okay yeah totally I did, I did it for you guys um but this is it guys this is freaking it the moment of truth and justice we have gotten to it all right we've reached it this insane journey we've been on and i'm not gonna beat around the bush too much i'm not gonna talk on it too much because i know you just guys want to probably just get to it okay so real quick before we get to it uh last episode uh robin said uh those who fight with monsters must take care to not become one themselves Brock Van Zeeks, Case 5, Grace Attorney 1. It all ties back to that. When Rupert Krogray killed McGundle, who was responsible for his father's death, he'd become that which he despised. On the other hand, Van Zeeks had always held strong and been true to himself. No matter how hard and unfair life seemed, he never stepped into the darkness. That's why it crushed him so hard to hear his brother had betrayed the monster he held on to. You got it, man. You got it. It's what makes this shit so fucking resonating. What makes it so incredible. And it's just like every facet of this game feels like it was just meticulously crafted with so much amazing theming that ties it all together and that just makes you just go like you just sit back and go god damn god damn son and it's really i, I just gotta I, I give a big thank you again to all these comments that i've been seeing these uh, these past few episodes for pointing out all these amazing similarities and theming that i I definitely wouldn't have noticed myself. Really just makes me so impressed with this game, even more than I was already. But Robin, thank you so much for your enlightening comment and to all the enlightening comments that have come before it. And it is for that reason you are comment of the day. Also, I, I usually do this at the end of a video, but if you guys enjoyed this series, please consider leaving a like on this video. It really does help me out. And if you're not already, why not subscribe and become a picky penguin? aboard the SSLP. We have a lot of fun on here, and I promise we'll be continuing even more awesome Let's Plays just like this one. All right, guys, the big finale. Here we go, the moment of truth and justice. Uh, don't worry, if you're worried, oh no, is it gonna shit the bed? Was it? I was slightly worried, maybe it might, you know, crap out at the end. Nope, don't worry. Just brace yourselves, right? It's just about to get fucking crazy. Take it away, Pastor, go. Go ahead, Ryanosuke, read it. The prosecution gives its full support. Very well, then. No. For God's sake. No! 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 I pen this, my last will and testament, in the final moments before my inevitable and willing death. The hour is 11 p.m., and I sit at my writing desk in my office. My good friend Asogi stands at my shoulder. He has expressed his intent to invoke the dying ritual of the duel that I may depart this world with honor. Oh. In honor of which I am utterly undeserving. The Japanese are truly merciful people. Wow, interesting. I, Clint Van Zeeks, Lord of the Manor of the Van Zeeks Estate, hereby confess the following. I am the killer who has come to be known in society as the Professor, guilty of four counts of murder. I will not here discourse the corruption of rife among the aristocracy, which is to me, as one of them, so apparent. However, six months ago I took the life of a member of the House of Lords 
at the heart of the depravity. A demon who had habitually sacrificed the common man to further his own interest, abusing his position of power. The laws impotent against such a vile avarice, only a fellow demon could rid society of this menace. That demon was my quarry, upon whom I willingly set my great hound. But though I am a hunter of some experience, I am a poor felon, it seems. My guilt was at once recognized by another, and I became subject to his extortion. He held over me the threat of exposing my wicked crime to my beloved wife and brother. Under that threat, I have done this man's bidding for months now, killing those he demanded I kill. As I watched my former mentor perish before my eyes at the jaws of the hound I commanded, I realized that I had lost the last shred of decency within me and sunk to the level of a wild beast. There is no path back to the light, be it I or my dear friend Asoki, who dies this night. I am eternally damned. To my extortioner, male Strongheart, may you feel the jaws of the beast at your throat every time you swallow. Wow. Holy shit, man. So now we know. Yes, Clint Van Zeeks was a murderer, but somebody was directing him and naming his victims. His extortioner, Lord Mail Strongheart. It was you! Lord Strongheart, a moment ago, you claimed that what the court has just heard could destroy justice in this country. But you weren't trying to protect justice at all. All you were trying to do was conceal the secret of your true nature and the countless lives you sacrificed up till now. It just didn't make sense to me that the third victim, the former Lord Chief Justice, was my brother's benefactor and a man of lofty principles. As I said, Clint had no possible reason to kill the man! But you did, didn't you, Lord Strongheart? To eliminate the man who stood between you and the office you'd set your sights on. So you use your own hunting dog, Lord Clint Van Seeks, to take him down. It had to be done. London's unsavory shadows are deep, and the arm of the law fails to reach the depths. Crime must be caught off at the roots, but the Lord Chief Justice at the time couldn't see that. He was weak. Lofty principles, you say? Tantamount to cowardice, if you ask me. Which is why I took his place, in order to fight the crime he was allowing to spread like wildfire. By murdering the man, the Reaper, the Professor, the name makes no difference. As I've explained countless times already, it was all done for the furtherance of law and order in London. Objection! Are you going to legitimize the murder of my father now too? Ah, uh, catch the Sogi. Well, that was unfortunate. I'd fully intended to send him back to Japan, as we'd agreed. I don't believe you. It was you, wasn't it? You killed him! No, it wasn't me who took your father's life. Then who? On the night following his mock execution, I went to Loge's cemetery at three in the morning with Jigoku. Judge Jigoku? There had to be a collaborator on the Japanese side to manage Asogi's treatment after his repatriation. Shigoku had fierce ambition. It made him easy to manipulate. Ten years ago, after he stood trial for the destruction of the witness stand, I had words with him. When I told him the position of Minister of Foreign Affairs could be his, he couldn't agree fast enough. Sishiro, you fool. As you know, Asugi escaped the prison in a closed casket and was subsequently interred. We intended to dig him out of his grave before he ran out of air. But sadly, all did not go to plan. Ah! There was an unexpected visitor to the cemetery with his own ideas about digging up graves. A man who witnessed what nobody was supposed to see. Enoch Drabber. Of course, I knew grave robbers frequented London cemeteries. 
put that grave on that particular night. Blast! If people find out the convict wasn't really executed, the scandal will rock the very foundations of the Empire! Then what, what do we do? Shoot him, Mr. Shigoku! Shoot Asoki at once! He can't live now that this has happened! He has to go! What are you talking about? You had an agreement! You promised to me we could return to Japan! Everything has changed now. If the truth got out because of this, both of us would be finished. Forever! Come on, Shigoku, do it! Pull the trigger! Shoot! Wow! God damn, dude. Shigoku shot Asogi from the shadows. The grave robber was so close, the blood sprayed over his coat. He fled as fast as his legs could would carry him. Then Shigoku and I put Asogi's body back in the grave from which he just emerged. When I later learned of the waxwork modeler's presence at the scene as well, I made her swear to two things. Never to remove the professor's mask, and never to speak of the events of that night. And with that, the secret was buried along with the Sogi's corpse. So, now you know what really happened in Logate Cemetery that night. What? I thought everybody would be happy! Come on! Is that what you wanted? Your stupid truth. It was Shigoku, your Japanese acquaintance, who killed Asogi in the end, you see. He claimed to be the man's friend, but when push came to shove, he pulled the trigger. Just before Mr. Shigoku left the courtroom earlier, he said that the assassin exchange proposal was a demand from his British counterpart, not a request. So you coerced him too, using what happened in the graveyard. By that time, Shigoku was the Minister of Foreign Affairs negotiating international treaties with Britain. You can imagine what would have happened if it came to light he'd murdered a compatriot ten years earlier. He would have lost everything. I merely reminded him of that. How do you sleep at night? These past ten years, I've fought tirelessly with the darker recesses of London's criminal underworld. And I've used whatever means necessary to ensure that justice prevails and law and order reigns supreme. Objection. That couldn't be further from the truth. The fact is, you haven't fought crime at all. How dare you? I saved Clint Van Zeeks from dishonor and his death. Objection. Whilst behind the scenes, you systematically buried anyone who stood in your way. And then, you made my father take the blame. It was unavoidable. It was the only way to protect our justice system in public order. Let's not forget the others you had killed as well. Setting the defendant up as the Reaper to cover up the truth behind the murders of countless more. That's enough! Do you have any idea of the conniving that led to the acquittals of those wretched criminals? We have to fight fire with fire! Our course can't function without a reaper! Can't you see all I've done for this country? This has been my struggle! Objection. You've done nothing! It's Lord Van Zeeks here who worked tirelessly and justly in court, who is enduring the disgrace of the reaper name! Oh wow, that goes out to defend him, yeah! And Inspector Gregson, fraught with anguish for having sullied his hands through a desire to do the right thing! Not to mention Genshin Asogi, who risked his life going in pursuit of the truth you tried to hide. No, the darker recesses of London's underworld were largely filled by you. You little, when will you get it through your thick skulls? That was all for queen and country. I'm tiring of that excuse. You've consistently twisted the truth for bargaining power to make others do your bidding. Nothing more. That fucking face, dude. People who willingly twist the truth and coerce others have no right to call themselves part of the judiciary. I strongly suggest you don't ever talk of justice again!
Whoa, slow clap. Well, well, well. Dear me, my good fellows, dear me. A well-deserved round of applause, I think, for quite a marvelous performance. What are you talking about? Those delightfully grave expressions, that beautifully pronounced Queen's English. Really, our friends from Far East are quite the picture of industriousness. You fraud, keep your mockery. Please, don't misunderstand. It really is exactly as you both said. What are you trying to say? I've occupied the darker recesses of London's underworld and, how did you put it? Done nothing? I confess it's a little embarrassing to have it pointed out quite so starkly, but yes, I really have done nothing, which means I can be indicted for nothing. No. What? It's true. Personally, I have committed no crime. I've merely been surrounded by fools who've acted very rashly indeed. Okay. You, you can't get away with that. You've consistently preyed on people's weaknesses. And what? Threatened them. Are you sure it wasn't just bargaining? My God, his hair's all fucked up now too. Dude, that fucking clap. That was absolutely the fucking exact like animation and spirit of fucking Damon Gant. Like literally the exact same. If you weren't convinced that this guy is like probably his predecessor in some way. I would like to address all the good lords, ladies and gentlemen of the judiciary here present. You all know of these darker recesses in our great capital. And deep down, I believe you also know that to fight those who dwell there requires at least some of us to occupy the darkness ourselves. So let me appeal to your good sense now. Consider the situation with me. If this catalog of horrifying revelations were to become common knowledge among the six million inhabitants of London, what might happen? To learn that the infamous murderer of royals and nobles was a respected member of the aristocracy himself. That evidence was fabricated in a scapegoat's trial amid secret negotiations with prosecutors to effect a jailbreak. That the Reaper at the Bailey was an organized group of assassins managed by a Scullion inspector. And finally, that it was all masterminded by the Lord Chief Justice himself. If the general public of Britain knew the truth, all faith in the police and pr the prosecutor's office would be completely lost, without doubt. Public order in the capital would completely break down. We'd be cast back to the lawless days of the last century. Precisely, as it was hundreds of years ago when one in ten of the population were criminals. Think what we've accomplished since then. A public policing force, a comprehensive set of laws. And if you want to continue to protect this new era of law and order, I say again, we must at times occupy the darkness ourselves. We have successfully identified and apprehended the man responsible for taking Inspector Gregson's life. That is all that was expected of this trial. All these other matters that have been discussed will be eliminated from the minutes of these proceedings in the interest of preserving law and order. And to protect Her Majesty the Queen, of course. Well, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, what say you? He has a point. The things Lord Strongheart has done are quite unforgivable. But on the other hand... Isn't it our duty to maintain law and order in the capital? Yeah, Captain, our threat of the Reaper over the years has done wonders for the crime rate. And my fair means are foul. It's all thanks to Lord Strongheart. Oh my god, dude. Are, are you hearing this? This is the will of the British judiciary? For your rousing response, friends, I express my heartfelt gratitude. Therefore, in accordance with the overwhelming wishes of the court, the record shall be erased. You have to respect the man's ability to turn a situation to his favor. Lord Strongheart, really is a master of manipulation. Jesus Christ. 
You've conclusively proven his guilt. Yet still he managed to evade justice. I... I just don't know what we can do. Ryunosuke. Looks like the trial really is going to come to an end now. I'm almost out of options, I think. There's really only one path left open to me. This. It's time. Only one person can save us now. Yes, as I know only too well, the only thing that carries any weight in court is hard evidence. But, Mr. Ahoto, what evidence is there to use at this stage in the trial? I have an idea. I don't know whether anything will come of it, but if there was ever a time for this particular item we have among the evidence, it's now. This fucking buddy! Oh my. Yes, Mr. Holmes asked if you had that with you earlier. We've exposed all of Lord Strongheart's wrongdoing now. I've no doubt that Mr. Holmes had already deduced exactly how the truth would unfurl. So I think it must be time for the great detective to take center stage, don't you? Yes, absolutely. Let's take the hair by the ears then, and heave. All right, here it goes. Heave! Ow, 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 ow! My dear fellows, must I remind you every time a gentle tug will suffice? Mr. Holmes, you're looking in quite the wrong direction, Mr. Arahodo, because I'm over here. Uh, Mr. Arahodo, he's- Strongheart pulls his face off and it was, it was Holmes the whole time. Ah, super mind fuck. Hello, what the hell? It's Mr. Holmes, Mr. Holmes, he's a hologram? Okay, what the hell's going on? Hello, yes, I'm a ghost now. I died. I wasn't expecting you back, Holmes. Hello there. Ghost Holmes here in the plasma. Delighted to be here again, Lord Strongheart. What? What is the meaning of this? Bailiff, seize him. Put that man in irons. This is, this is a closed court. You've been warned what's already man. <laughs> man. <laughs> what? What? What the? What? Can't get hold of him, my lord. What the, the, we just go right through them. Oh my God. Aruba, Jamaica. Ooh, I want to take it to Bermuda. Bahama, go. There's a little fucking macarena. Look at him go. Oh yes, I am. I'm quite good at dancing, I must say. I'm afraid your efforts are wasted. You see, the great detective you see before you is composed entirely of light and shadow. An image, if you will. Where the fuck is it coming from? I have ascended to the level of godhood. Mr. Arhodo, I must congratulate you on your fine deductions. Mr. Holmes? What on earth is... Are you familiar, I wonder, with the invention known as the telephone? Uh, well, yes. I hear that some public telephones have been installed recently in Tokyo. But what you're doing is something that we can barely do in 2021. How are you talk? What are you talking about? There's plenty of, like, hologram things. Yeah, but they can just, like, walk around like that. And this is like a big, weird stage full of electro guests. Shut up, Sir Bizarro. Stop questioning my logic, all right? I'm here now, and this is... I'm doing the thing, all right? Stop. The sound of the speaker's voice is converted to an electric, electrical signal and transmitted instantly to another place. Quiet. Sounds all transmitted. So could not images keep them company, I'm used? I was denied some modest experimentation to develop such a device specifically for this very day. Modest experimentation, Mr. Holmes? What a modest description. Wow. <laughs> And so incidentally, I thought we might just as well transmit an entire scene. So incidentally, Mr. Holmes, now you're just being immodest. D do you mean to say you're not actually here, Holmes? Ah, I knew my trusty partner would have no trouble grasping the concept. Except he's grasping the stand to steady himself after your shock arrival. I'm from the future. Hello. Poor father. I would have hoped he might have been forewarned being the great detective's great partner. Leave my courtroom at once. Get out. I swear to you! Dear me, you, on the other hand, Lord Strongheart, appear to have a very poor grasp of the situation. Allow me to reiterate, I am not here. Which would, I hope, lead naturally to one asking. Where exactly are you? That very question I was awaiting. I am at present enjoying the air in a rather splendid garden. A garden? Not just any garden, you understand. A garden at Buckingham Palace. What? You you can't be your Buckingham Palace! What's Buckingham Palace, Mrs. Toe? I never heard of it. Really, Mr. Arahodo? Yeah, really. It's 
fucking sue me. Oh, wait, Esther, I'm a lawyer, bitch. Do you ever read the news, Mr. Hodo? Um, Mr. Holmes, is Iris with you there? Ah, uh, well now, I was just currently enjoying some tea. With Her Majesty. Her, her, her Majesty? Not just any Her Majesty, you understand. Her Majesty, the Queen of the British Empire. What? What on earth is all this about? Buckingham Palace. It's Her Majesty the Queen's res residence in London, Mr. Arrhodo. Order. Order at the court. I demand immediate silence. Her, Her Majesty the Queen. You can't be. I mean, no. This, this is some sort of unforgivably distasteful trickery by a third-rate detective. That's all. Unforgivably distasteful trickery. What's an apt description? A closed court session attended by elite members of the judiciary is a rare event. I presume that Her Majesty would be more than a little curious about the proceedings. So, I decided to show her everything from start to finish. Huh? You showed her? Indeed. By dint of the Sherlock Holmes remote cinematograph. You meddling? This is some kind of nightmare. Just as I appear to be standing before you, regaling your, you with talk of my latest invention. No doubt you've inferred that the reverse is also true. You, you don't mean... Her Majesty has seen and heard every moment of the proceedings. I assume there would be no objection. After all, every trial in this country is conducted under the auspices of Her Majesty, as you know. You, you... I confess I am quite impatient to hear Her Majesty's opinion about the unforgivable distasteful trickery in which you've been engaged over the past 10 years. No, I, I, I was merely. Oh, so sorry to keep you all waiting. Vicky and I have so much to talk about. <laughs> Vicky, <laughs> what, what the hell? Who's this little pig child? Iris, there you are. <laughs> Hi, Susie. In fact, I have a little message from Her Majesty. I message. Well then, if everyone is sitting comfortably, ahem. Forthwith and with immediate effect, all authority previously afforded to Mayor Strongheart is hereby revoked forevermore. <laughs> Furthermore, he will be prosecuted for crimes against his country in a public trial by jury in the coming days. So, it seems that Her Majesty doesn't believe we need to fight fire with fire. Justice in this country needn't be administered from the shadows at all. Mail Strongheart. The darkness you foster to conceal your despicable actions these last ten years is a thing of the past now. After today, your brand of law and order has no future. Because no longer are you the Lord Chief Justice. In the eyes of the law and of Her Majesty the Queen, you are nothing but a criminal! A judge! A judge! A judge! A judge! A judge! God is a judge! Oh my god! Too many fires! That's some heavy fire, bro! Uh-oh. London Bridge is falling! Oh wow, the physics of that object. Better watch out, dude! God, he's all fucking covered in ashes and shit. Lord Van Seeks left a will in which he confessed to everything. When those words came out of Asoki's mouth, it deranged me completely. Now I knew it must do anything and everything in my power to contain the situation. 
but I couldn't find the damned document. I searched the cell, but it wasn't there. What precipitated the jailbreak plot, I presume? <laughs> what do you mean? The need to obtain that will was all-consuming. I'm sure that if I facilitated Asoki's escape, he would emerge with the will somewhere on his person. But despite searching his limp body in the cemetery that night, it still eluded me. It never even crossed my mind that it was concealed in the sword's hilt. Now it's Ross who at the very end, finally, he takes the stand. Wow. Fuck me, dude. What pains me now is that my brother left this will without a word to me. I'm sorry, Lord Van Zeeks. In point of fact, I think perhaps that isn't the case. Sorry? How can that be? There is more to his last will and testament. What? Oh, really? As I confront the prospect of my demise, I feel bitter regret for my younger brother. Barak, you have always looked up to me, and now you follow in my footsteps to become a prosecutor. It is my fervent wish that my unspeakable deeds should not hinder your advancement. I ask not for your understanding, for none can understand my depravity. I ask only for forgiveness. Asogi is a fine detective and a hunter worthy of respect. He has agreed to honor my final two wishes. The first is that this document survives. The second, I cannot commit to paper. I have confessed my sins to my wife. May she find resolution in my death. With my eternal gratitude to my Japanese friend, I rest my quill. Clint Van Zeeks. Clint. Male Strongheart. You colluded with Seshiro Jigoku in a criminal plot so immense it spanned the oceans and two games. And you cold-heartedly murdered all those who knew the truth about what happened ten years ago. But why did you sit about that now, a whole decade later? To ascend to the very peak. These last ten years made me realize being the Lord Chief Justice wasn't enough, short of becoming Her Majesty's Attorney General. I could have no real power to effect the changes needed in this country. And for that promotion, I needed to ensure no remnants of the past remained. How could you? I like everything to run smoothly, in the exact manner that I prescribe, like a well-oiled machine. And I was just a step away. And for your ambition to succeed... Did you even bother to count the number of brilliant people you had killed? Ah, Mr. Reaper, are you not forgetting something? Such as... You very much adopted your usual prosecutor-like demeanor in the proceedings now. But the reality of the situation is that you are the defendant in this trial. Ah. However, the presiding judge would appear to have fallen from the bench, as it were. May I suggest, therefore, that we entrust the final adjudication to an old friend. <laughs> Hello there, Santa's back. My lord. As a member of the judiciary, I have been following the proceedings from the gallery. Damn, she got crazy pants. I was super pissed earlier when he kicked me off. I was like, hey, come on, I want to be here for the final case. And I must say, I shan't ever forget the extraordinary battle between good and evil that I witnessed here today. Oh, that bang of the gavel was so much quieter than the other one. Oh, oh, the other one started to hurt my ear holes. The darkness that has blinded justice in our land these past ten years has at last been dispelled. 
thanks in no small part to the efforts of a bright young star from the east. Defense Council Naruhodo. Yes, my lord. On behalf of everyone here, President O'Barely, I give you my heartfelt thanks. Even though everything I was like, whatever, I was gonna let him go, actually. <laughs> You're too kind, my lord. The first time I faced you in court, just under a year ago now, I had the faintest of intimations that if British justice, so warped and twisted over its long history, was finally to no change, this might just be the man to do it. What? But at the time, I wouldn't allow myself to acknowledge the possibility. I couldn't overcome my hatred of the Japanese after the circumstances of my brother's death. Mr. Narahodo. Allow me to apologize for countless discourtesies on my part. You are a lawyer of boundless talent. Oh, poor fan seeks. Don't cry. Don't fucking cry, Narahodo. Just keep it, keep it together. Keep that shit together. Fucking bury it down. I'm gonna bury your fucking shit down. When I first arrived in Great Britain, I was literally a nobody, certainly not a lawyer. The truth is, my fortunes have entirely been made by the miraculous people I've met. My best friend, Kazuma Sogi, who led me here to Britain in the first place. My loyal and ever patient judicial assistant, Ms. Susito, who helped me study to become a lawyer and always cleans my room when I don't. Which is always! The brilliant Lord Van Seeks, who never failed to challenge his Nipponese rival. And not to mention, the exceptional master of logic and reasoning who showed me the true art of deduction, Mr. Holmes. Save the best for last, Mr. Arahodo. What a relief. And also, damn it! <laughs> and also Iris and her tea. Yay! I'm best for last! Yay! <laughs> damn it, Iris! Come on, it's supposed to be me! I did the most in this game! I'm well aware that without all these people's help and support, I wouldn't be where I am today. The truth is a guiding light that always leads to happiness. I've lived by that principle for a long time now, but actually, it's not true. Do any of us look happy? The truth can also cause great pain, sometimes even leave people on the brink of despair. And for that reason, there are those who feel the need to hide the truth, who do it instinctively even. But as soon as we allow our eyes to settle on something other than the truth, the darkness that takes hold, and from there it grows, until eventually, it makes us blind to the guiding light of the truth altogether. So that's why it's my belief that we must all resolve never to avert our eyes from what is just and true. And slap our cheeks like this, ow. So that we can continue to walk the straight and narrow path ahead. Well, I must excuse myself now. I'm having tea with the with the Queen of England. But before I go, Mr. Narahodo, let me compliment you on your grand opus. What? Without your beautifully composed case against Lord Strongheart, Her Majesty would have been unable to act. Thanks to you and your fellows, the Arctic undertones corrupting Britain's justice system have been silenced. Um, thank you very much. So, until our paths cross again, somewhere, over the rainbow. Well then, that was uh, quite a last case, wasn't it? Or two cases, or however many it was. I have started to lose count. It would appear this long trial has finally come to an end. Long motherfucking trial. My apologies for any anxiety caused, my lord. Oh, I had to take pop quite a few pills for this one. I'm quite sure we shall meet again here in the courtroom before long, Prosecutor Barack Van Zeeks. In conclusion of these proceedings, I hereby declare the defendant, Barack Van Zeeks. Not guilty! Let the motherfucking bagels fly! <laughs> Woo! Fucking audience is cheering. I don't think the audience gives a shit anymore. They're gonna let Stronger just walk out that fucking door. They got crap. Everybody here can fuck right off. That is all. Court is adjourned. On, on in the, the end, end you, you find one in the proper way, way to send, send everybody, everybody off, off, which is to, to tell them to go, go fuck, fuck themselves. themselves.
It really is quite satisfying. It really, it really is. is. My character arc is complete now. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Wow. What a fucking finale that shit was. God damn my. Damn my. Uh, November 4th, 421 p.m., the old Bailey Defense Sandy Chamber. It, it really is all over. But did I sacrifice too much? Mr. Narahodo, come over here and make out with me. Okay. That'd be the best ending I could possibly ask for. I really must congratulate you. It was a truly, truly splendid performance. Honestly, I couldn't be happier for you. Oh, thank you very much. But I really couldn't have done it without you at my side through it all, Miss Isito. Oh? Your kind words mean so much to me. Aw. It really was a very splendid show, that Naruto. I'd have thought you'd be smiling from ear to ear, but you look rather glum. Well, dude, I did kind of like just dismantle the entire like justice system, so you know it's a little uh, left a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth. Well, of course I'm delighted about the verdict, but in exposing the truth, I'm afraid I've caused my client a great deal of pain. I'm really not sure that's what a lawyer ought to be doing. Oh well, in that case. I'm quite sure that when you see Lord Van Zick's smiling face, everything will seem much better. <laughs> you little asshole, how dare you? How dare you do this to me? I will fucking bury you for this! I'll see you in the next case, dipshit! See you in DGS3, motherfucker! <laughs> um, Miss Suzuto, everything seems worse. He has a face like thunder. Like thunder. Oh dear, I really shouldn't have presumed. Trust me, if you want, would you really want me smiling? It would just freak you out, right? It's true, actually, that kind of would. Yeah, I'd just look evil or something. Mr. Narahodo. Uh, um, yes? Almost a year it's been now since I first encountered you here in this very courthouse. For you to have risen to the level of excellence you have demonstrated today, well, it's quite remarkable. But, but I... I expose the most unpalatable truth could ever imagine in court today. That your brother was a crazy psycho. Fuck. I feel as though I've robbed you of something you held so dear. What was it he said? To fight those who dwell in the darkness requires at least some of us to occupy the darkness ourselves. But that, that was just the feeble excuse of a coward. Only those with a steadfast eye for the truth have what it takes to fight the dark forces of crime. You made fine work of establishing that fact in court today. Oh. Well, thank you. What magnanimous words. I'm quite sure that Kazuma-sama would have a smile on his face at this very moment if he were here. Kazuma. He's right over there. Oh, guys, look at me now. <laughs> Stop saying that, Mr. Snow. Mm, pulls that sword fucking cuts me now. <laughs> Um, uh, Miss Suzuto, there's another face like thunder here. Oh my, he really was here. Damn! I'm a ninja, Lord Van Zeeks. What is it, asshole? Don't think for a second I'm gonna invite you back to my place, all right? You're not my assistant anymore. You are the worst assistant anyway. You're never funny. You're just all serious as shit. That dumb face. Well, you were always serious too with your dumb face. Fuck you. No, fuck you. It's not like we deserve each other. No, not at all. We're nothing alike. No, we're not. Ah, huh, ha, huh. Allow me to congratulate you on your acquittal. Congratulate me or curse me. You failed to bring down the Reaper. I owe you an apology. Damn straight you do. No, it's I who should apologize. Your father, Genshin. If I had been stronger, then perhaps... I made an unforgivable error of judgment. I can offer no excuse. And I can offer no forgiveness. That said, I suppose you fought for justice and the truth. For that at least, I can't withhold respect. Your words mean more to me than you could know. I will hold them dear, asshole. Kasmasama. I must say, there's one thing that's still bothering me. What's that? 
Whatever happened to that damn dog? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Scooby-Doo runs in here. It was me all along. We did. Scooby. Ree, righty, roo. Fucking pulls out a chainsaw and just fucking kills everybody. The end. Da -da 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 -da. What's that? The will that Lord Clint Van Zeeks wrote before his duel with my father. Asogi is a fine detective and a hunter worthy of respect. He has agreed to honor my final two wishes. The first is that this document survives. The second, I cannot commit to paper. I confess my sins to my wife. May she find resolution in my death. With my eternal gratitude to my Japanese friend, I rest my quill. Clint Van Zeeks. Yeah. What can the second of his final wishes have been? That your father agreed to honor, you mean? Hmm. Uh, I think perhaps. I think perhaps. I might be able to shed some light on that. What? Father? Probably has something to do with Cosmo, right? It was ten years ago, as you know. The day before. Before the execution was scheduled. I went to the prison to say my farewells to Genshin. Why aren't you putting up more of a fight, Genshin? If you'd only agree to it, Cicero and I would gladly petition the government. We've been through this already. You don't... You don't need to worry about me. Anyway, Yuzhen, I have a favor to ask of you. Something of great importance. Ah. Uh, Damn, did I really just look the exact same back then? You're one of my greatest friends, Genshin. Whatever it is, consider it done. They're like, fuck you, I'm not gonna redo his whole model for a ten- For like a two second flashback ten years ago? I'm going to tell you an address. I need you to go there and at, at once, in secret, and telling no one. You should find a lady of the gentry in hiding there. A lady of the gentry? Oh my god. <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god! She's not in a good way, and she's with a child. The birth is imminent. Oh my god! It's fucking Iris' mommy! <laughs> Holy shit! Who is it? Is it actually his, like, wife? Is it actually gonna mean that Cosmo's related in some way to Iris? Either fully or half? If it's, if it's not the same woman? As a medical man, I'd like you to attend to her. Please, you're our only hope. By any chance, is the child yours, Genshin? Don't be daft. Oh! It's a favor that was asked of me by a man I knew. As his dying wish. Oh, no, never mind. Ah, my goodness. I swore to the man I would help. That I would do whatever I could for his wife and his unborn child. But if something should happen to me, I need to ask you that same favor. You're the only person I know that I can truly rely on. What did you say? If something should happen to you, tomorrow night you're going to be... To be... <laughs> you never know, though, do you? What life will bring. All right, then. Tell me the address. <laughs> he thought I was gonna get out of there. <laughs> Sorry, Sergey, that's not gonna happen, dude. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Um, I'll head there at once with Cicero and... No, not with him. Pardon? This is a favor I'm asking of you. And only you, Yuzhen. <laughs> he did not trust Cicero and for good fucking reason. Good on you, dude. Right. I see. Very well, then. That very night, I got a train from Paddington to Dartmoor in Devon. I found the old house. In the middle of nowhere, it was. An old hunting hound lay asleep in the grounds. Oh. The poor woman was on the floor at the back of the darkened room. She was in mortal danger. I broke her waters to precipitate the labor before she weakened further, but it was a torturous birth. I did everything humanly possible for her and her child. <laughs> Everything's tied to everything in these games! And in the end, I was lucky enough to welcome a new life into the world. But tragically, my efforts to save the mother's life were in vain. I held the healthy newborn girl in my arms, and wept for longer than I care to remember. Eventually, in something of a daze, I looked around the room. Oh, 
There was precious, precious little in it, but an old traveling trunk ca trunk caught my eye. What? Uh. The Baskerville? Wait. Huh? The Baskerville estate? Wait. Are you telling me this is the... Is this the wife of fucking Clint? Clint Van Zeke's wife? Oh my god. It had clearly been well looked at after, over the years. Made of top quality leather with fine stitching. But it was when I saw the emblem on the side of it that everything dropped into place. B for Baskerville. B, B for Baskerville? B Baskerville? You mean the woman was the wife of Lord Clint Van Zeeks? Oh my God! That means that uh, wait, this is the way. What? Who would that? How would that work? Uh, niece? Yes, that would make Iris actually uh Lord Brock Van Zeeks' uh niece. What the fuck? Oh my god! That's right. The newborn was his daughter. But, but that makes no sense! Why on earth wouldn't Clint have trusted the child to my care in that case? I was completely unaware that he even had a daughter. I suppose. He didn't really have any choice. What? Well, your brother said that he confessed everything to his wife. So she must have been beside herself with worry for her child. If the true identity of the professor were ever to be made public, the girl will be forever branded as the daughter of the infamous mass murderer. Ah! So the only solution was to distance the young girl from the Van Zyck's family as much as possible. I... I don't believe it. Wow. So we actually do get this answer. I, I was not sure if we would, honestly. I thought might, that could be left up in the air, but holy shit, we fucking do. I imagine that in his final hour, Lord Clint Van Zeeks made the obvious choice. He would have thought to himself, this Japanese man here is someone I can trust. I honored my promise to Genshin, of course. However, only a month later, I was summoned back to Japan. And without disclosing the par par parentage of the child, I couldn't obtain permission to take her with me. Oh. Oh, how awful. I was completely at a loss. In the end, I had to ask my great friend. I asked him if he would be a father to her. That being Mr. Holmes, I presume. Yes. He took one look into my eyes and agreed to it on the spot. Mr. Holmes, he has a heart of gold. Really, all it can be said that I did for the child was to give her a name. Oh? When I come to Britain, I was trying to escape from the grief of losing my darling wife. So it was her name that I gave the little girl. Your wife's name, Professor Mikotoba? In other words... The name of my mother. Ayame Mikotoba. Oh! That's right. Ayame. Or in English, Iris. Oh! Wow, that's cool, dude! Iris. I... I had no idea. Ding dong! Ow! Sir Huda, what's wrong? Th this little thing just pitched me on the behind through my trouser pocket. Hard! It's a bad bunny. Oh, my dear fellows, can you hear me? <laughs> Mr. Holmes, is that you? Yep, and I was just here with a boombox. Yes, yes, we can hear you. You see what excessive tugging can do? Let there be a lesson to you. Mr. Holmes, we weren't able to thank you properly before, but you were simply marvelous. Your checkmate move was a stroke of genius. Indeed it was, wasn't it? I surpassed myself, I fear. It had become apparent to me that to stop the Lord Chief injustice would require such measures. Oh, Iris! Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I'm so pleased. What a wonderful outcome. A messy Queen Vicky said she thought my special blend was delicious. I can die happy now. Oh, um, I'm sure she did. After all, no one brews a more delicious tea than you do, Iris. Let's have a party.
ready to celebrate. And Mr. Reaper, you simply must come too. What? Um, I'm... I'm afraid I, I couldn't. The Reaper of the Bailey, flustered by a 10-year-old girl. Again. No! Really? Oh, poo. But I give you my word that I shall present myself at your residence in the near future to express my gratitude. Oh, how lovely. Yes, we have quite a bit to explain. You promise now, I will let you forget. I'm through it. This whole fucking time. All right, Iris, thank you for all your help earlier. Oh, that was nothing. Just come back home soon. You don't think you heard any of that other shit, right? Ow! Ah! One final pinch goodbye, was it? Motherfucker. Now I'm smiling. Ah! Well, I think I ought to be leaving. I guess I better go back to being dead again. Lord Van Zeeks, would you care to accompany me? Sure. Being dead sounds great right now. <laughs> Certainly. I just found out I'm a fucking uncle. Mr. Narahodo, allow me once again to express my deep gratitude to you. But don't take it personally, all right? Don't you fucking look at me with those poppy dog eyes of yours, all right? I swear to God, I didn't do this for you. I didn't do anything for you. And you didn't do anything for me either. All right, we're still enemies. I hate you. I hate all Japanese. Don't get by. I believe you saved my life. Wait, Lord Van Zeet. Oh, for God's sakes, what? I said my piece. Yes. Um, what are you intending to do now? The same thing I do every night, my Nipponese friend. Go back to my office and play with my dolls. See you, bitch. <laughs> and you better not have touched my door hood at all. I swear to God. Well, clearly, I shall have to resign from the prosecutor's office. Oh, no. I intend to publicize the full truth about the professor case. Once that's done, the Van Zyck's family will be ostracized completely from London society. No! Dead, bro, dead! Surely not. So as soon as I am free from my employment, I shall leave the capital. In despair. Oh, I see. Uh, don't be a fool. It was me. Hey, look, I can see how tall I am compared to you. <laughs> You're a tall motherfucker. I know I am. Are well, those the actions of a man once feared as the mighty reaper of the Bailey? I beg your pardon. For the past ten years, you've endured that pseudonym and been cast as one of the dark forces yourself. Now that you've finally been free from that dis disrepute, your battle is just beginning, surely. Well, I certainly never expected to hear those words from your lips. I waited a very long time to come to London. Now I'm properly here. I intend to learn all that I can. Anyway, goodbye for now. Ryunosuke Narahodo. See ya, dude. Cosmo Sagi! Seems as though he's really mature suddenly. Now he's not a vengeful dickhead anymore. He's not the only one who's matured, Miss Narahoto. Huh? Well, I think we should make our way back to Baker Street. We must help Iris with tonight's dinner. We must. Huzzah! Now, so I guess decide whether we should stay or should we go. Da, 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 da. It was then that I came to an important decision about my future. I'm going nowhere. <laughs> uh, November 4th, 6.25 p.m. Home sweet. It's the same dinner from last night. Yeah, we never really ate it. We just all kind of went to sleep after all the fucking sick plot reveals. I'm home. I've got a gun, bitch! Ah! I've been out just to shoot this thing all fucking game. I've been getting itchy trigger finger. What time are you going here? We've been waiting ages all day. What are you doing with that colorful piece of history? It's a party, isn't it? It's going to go off with a bang. I mean, fireworks, ideally. Well, you ain't going fire. Smoke's the best next best thing, ain't it? There's a girl on Fresno Street who could help you with that, I think. Time to die, Otto! Right, I'll remember that. You don't have to reload the, that thing every time I speak. Uh, you really must hear this. It's really quite the most extraordinary thing. I show you, it will defy your expectations. Take down every detail now, Mikotoba. 
Ah, the world-famous great detective regaling his partner with the tale of his adventure. A sight to behold. Would you care to hazard a guess? Where do you suppose the fiendish runaway had concealed himself? Would you believe? Inside the trunk I found abandoned in his cabin. I would believe it, yes. <laughs> I say, Mikotoba, I take not a hint of surprise. I wonder why that is. <laughs> Maybe because I was there at the scene as well, Holmes. <laughs> what? You were? Then why the deuce did you say so before? Not quite the sight I was expecting to behold, but still. <laughs> it's hard not to feel privileged to see it. Hello, Mr. Holmes, Professor Mikotoba. I'm finally back from the Bailey. And not a moment too soon. A feast prepared by Iris and Mrs. Still waits. I must say, I haven't seen Sister looking so happy in a very long time. Oh, Bruno, there you are. Dinner is on the table, everyone. Please, do come and take a seat. Time to fill me boots. <laughs> fill me boots. Goodness, is that really true, Gina? Yup, I'm losing me corpus clover and going back to what I do best. It's a diver's life for me. What? No, come on, dude. Grunts and die for your sins! Gina, you motherfucker! You're really leaving the police force? Well, bye, Jenny! Because everyone's a douchebag! Well, the boss ain't around no more, so. Oh. And anyway, no matter how hard I try, that Reaper ain't ever gonna accept a diver turn dick, is he? Well, people can change, you know. Ah, yes. That reminds me. I rather thoughtfully offered to relieve the bailiff of this now defunct piece of evidence. Eh? It's the inspector's pocket watch. And the crown has been reattached. And that watch was his pride and joy. A symbol of his great achievements at Scotland Yard. For ten years without fail, it measured every second of that man's remarkable career. But now, it's stopped. Someone needs to keep the memory of Inspector Gregson's career alive by taking on the great responsibility of winding that watch every single day again. Yes, someone with an equally fierce detective spirit. It's gonna be me! There ain't no one else, motherfucker! I decided this! You didn't push anything on me! I decided! Give me the watch! I'm out of here! I'm taking the turkey too! Quite right. I mean... After all, the boss was... Well, he, he was the boss! Yes, Jenny, yes he was! Aw, oh, yeah, good! Oh, yeah. I made you a promise and all, didn't I, uh, Iris? That I'd become a proper detective one day and track down your old man. Oh, well, we already kind of figured that out. <laughs> all right, then, it's decided. I'll do it. And I swear, I'll find your dad and bring him back, bring him in kicking and screaming. Uh, well, I'm not entirely sure that would be appropriate. <laughs> oh, God. Yes, I think, Gina, it might be best to, well. I think I'd like you to forget that promise, Gina. <laughs> oh, maybe she did hear. Maybe Iris did hear it. Eh? Iris? Obviously, I've always wondered about who my real daddy is. Of course I have. I wanted to know where I've come from. I thought it might tell me something about myself. But I've caused such a lot of trouble trying to find out. For so many people. Holmesy, Bruno, Professor Mickey, <laughs> Mickey Doodle. That's me, right? Uh, oh, no, not at all, my dear. Really, you owe no apology to anyone. Well, anyway, I've decided to give up on it. Because I finally realized... My daddy is the greatest in the world. I don't think it matters what his name is or where he's from. Don't you agree? Holmesy? Oh, that little look at her face is so adorable. With every word, Iris. Thank you, Holmesy. Thank you, daddy.
I think Nikitoba. Yes, Holmes? I think that I ought to express my gratitude to you. No? For six years, you and I solved many a mystery together. And during that time, I remember countless expressions of gratitude for our good services. But a moment ago, I heard the most pleasing expression of gratitude of them all. And I should never have experienced it. Were it not for you. Aw. You old softy, Holmes. But I must confess, it's a weight off my mind to hear you say it. <laughs> well then, I think this calls for a lengthy violin recital, wouldn't you say? Oh, well, the food will go cold. That's the only problem. Maybe next week, Holmesy? Are you sure week is long enough, Iris? <laughs> oh, God, I slay me. If I am your daddy, I'm a funny daddy. <laughs> oh, my God. Fuck this fucking game. God damn it. How dare you? How dare you make me feel things? <laughs> even amidst the most troubling of cases, even reeling from the most shocking of revelations, returning in the evening to this suite of rooms, there's always warmth and happiness to be had. The home of the world's greatest detective, and my home too, with my greatest family. November 4th, 9.37 a.m. or p.m. Naruto's legal consultancy. This attic room has been my home and office for almost a year now. I've certainly had some unforgettable experiences whilst I've lived here. But I think now, the time has come. Time to bid this place farewell. Oh, really? So he's actually gonna decide to leave. <gasps> Paint that room at all, you motherfucker. Naruhodo? Naruhodo. Oh, Professor, I thought you were Susano for a second. Sorry, my, uh, <coughs> I was in my throat. Are you alone? I didn't hear any sound from Susano's room. Yes, yeah, susano saw went out after dinner. She took a carriage. Something about an important matter she needed to take care of. Ah. Huh. I see. I wanted to thank you for what you did earlier. Oh? With Iris, I mean. When the subject of her father came up. Or Clint Van Seeks. I made up my mind many years ago never to tell her who her real father was. As what was agreed with Genshin after all. Lord Clint Van Seeks' final wishes before he died, you mean? Yes. I've had to take some rather drastic steps at times to protect that secret, you know. Calling Susto back to Japan six months ago, for example. Oh. That's why? When I read Saseki-san's report about his final days in London, my heart nearly stopped. You stumbled across the crux of that terrible case, the dog's collar. The description of the Baskerville insignia left me in no doubt. Baskerville. If you decide to investigate that insignia, sooner or later you'd have met, made the connection to the Van Zeeks. And to make matters worse, Sisto knew of the unpublished story as well. A story that Iris had written based on my notes from the time. It would all tie back to the, to that. Yeah. I see. It's not even the, wasn't even so much the fact that, like, you know, the whole British fucking government resting on this, or the justice system. It was actually really about Iris. Ah, uh, yes. The Hound of the Baskervilles. Exactly. It was a work of fiction, but based on the grim reality of a huge beast of a dog being used as a murder weapon. A dog with the Baskerville family emblem around its neck. Armed with those two clues, I feared you and Susto might arrive at the truth. So I invented that story about having collapsed to just fire leaving London and returning to Japan at once. All in aid of halting any investigations you and she might have been con contemplating. I mean, you know I keep records of shit though, right? Yes, I know, but I, I just thought maybe you just forget. I see. Something I've never understood is why Susu san came across that manuscript in Japan though. You know, ours is the Hound of the Baskerville story, I mean. Holmes sent it to me. That was before Susto left Japan. He was very troubled about what should be done about it, you see. I read it and carelessly left it on my desk, which is where Susto came across it, of course. Ah. 
It was the only case Holmes and I ever pursued that I didn't record in meticulous detail. I was stunned when I discovered that young Iris had pieced together so much of it from my paltry notes. Holmes and I discussed the matter and decided that we couldn't allow the story's publication. At that point, I returned the manuscript by post to Holmes for safekeeping. So you did all that to stop Iris from finding out the truth about her father. That's right, because Holmes had told me how astute she'd become. However, having witnessed events in court today, I must say my opinion has somewhat shifted. Oh? I think at some point in the future, the time will come for Iris to know the truth. And when it does, well, I believe it will be for the best. I think so too. Actually, Professor, I... I want to talk to you about something too. Judging from that expression, I'd say you've come to a decision, have you? Yes, I have. I will be returning with you to Japan. Are you quite sure? I'm really only here as a substitute for Kazuma. But he's here in Britain now, as originally intended. Locum student, Naruhoto, doesn't really have a right to stay, I think. I see. Looking back now, when I first arrived here in February. By becoming a lawyer just seemed to be the way things turned out. With Kazuma, Sisto-san, and Mr. Holmes all gently pushing me in that direction. I spent the best part of a year immersed in this world, but always aware of a seed of doubt inside me. It's a shovel! No, it's a troll! <laughs> or wait, was I trowel on your shovel? I don't even remember anymore! And at some point, somebody said spade. Who even was that? I don't know! Maybe we both did! I don't know anymore! I don't know anymore! Until today. Standing in that courtroom earlier, all doubts vanished from my mind. I was totally focused. I was sure of my belief in my client, and I was sure I could see the trial through. And at the end of it, I finally realized no one else chose this path for me. I chose it myself. The path of a defense lawyer, eh? Yes, that's what I am now. That's what I'll be going back with you to Japan as. And that's the path I'll be following for the rest of my life. And my children will as well, whether they like it or not. Well, it sounds like you've made quite a resolution there. I have. I guess it doesn't make sense. I mean, technically, <laughs> he didn't, it's not like he's gonna be like, no, I'm not going back to Japan. I'm going to the great new brilliant country of japan -ifornia. <laughs> Technically, the actual games did take place in Japan. So yeah, I guess it makes sense he would be going back. Very well then. I must say, it's extremely welcome news. But it's got staff for Iris and everybody else. I shall make arrangements for your return first thing tomorrow, but I don't imagine we'll depart for a few days. Not with the symposium having been canceled now. It's such a shame. Never mind, I'm sure there'll be other opportunities in the future. Well then, I'll bid you good night. <gasps> My sister was there the whole time! Susto san? I. Just wanted to let you know I'm back. Did you, um, hear what your father and I were discussing? I'm sorry, I did, yes. I couldn't help, but... Oh, how much did you hear? Well, from the part about Iris' real father, I think. In other words, from the beginning. <laughs> So you made up your mind. You'll return to Japan and continue working as a defense lawyer. Ah, uh, yes. I'm... I'm sorry. I really should have consulted you about it. I did want you earlier this evening, actually. But you'd already gone out. Oh no. That's quite alright. I already knew that's what you'd decide, Naruhoto-san. 
You did? Um, sister son? Ah, uh, yes. I suppose this means it has to be farewell soon. I suppose. He'll be a great help to Cosima going forward. I mean, I know he's a brilliant lawyer, but he's new to the British courtroom. He'll certainly benefit greatly having a brilliant judicial assistant at his side. I'll do my very best. Aw. I wish I could say it, but I just can't. I can't ask her to come with me. After all, she was always supposed to be coming to Britain as Cosma's assistant. It's growing late. We should both try to get some sleep. I'm sure you must be exhausted after today. Oh, yes. You're right. Before I retire, let me just say one more th time. You really were quite splendid in court today. So if you ask me, anyone who thinks of you as a substitute or a locum should be ashamed of themselves. Sister son. Thank you. Aww. It's your little buddy. November 7th, 5.42 a.m., Port of Dover, Quayside. Can't believe this day's finally come. Iris, big sad. You're really leaving then, Bruno? Afraid so, Iris. Thank you so much for everything. I don't know what I'll do without your wonderful cooking and delicious tea. Oh, I wish you weren't going. But, but you have to come back and visit. Say you will. Of course. I promise. Well, it was a very brief reunion, but it was a pleasure to pursue a case with you again after so long. For a while, at least, it felt like old times. Yes, I suppose on reflection, there's something to be said for it, having a little fun once in a while. I'll just go and say goodbye to the professor as well by shooting him with my gun so he can't leave, I think. All right, Iris, you can do that. Oh, sudden voice acting. I've just checked, Narahodo-san. Your luggage is already on board. Such a beautiful morning. Perfect for embarking on a journey, isn't it? Before I set off, I'd just like to say how thankful I am for everything you've done for me. And give my warmest regards to Kazuma, please. Also that I love you. Actually, I think you ought to give him your regards in person, don't you? Sorry? Ryunosuke. I was here the whole time! Kazuma! Wh what are you doing here? <laughs> Do you really think I'd miss my best friend's departure? <laughs> Thanks. To be honest, I'd been looking forward to our wild time tearing up the streets of Her Majesty's capital, but, uh... Hmm. Well, we'll have to save that for another time. Personally, I'm looking forward to facing you in court again. Me too. But, uh, we're both defense lawyers, so, uh... I'm going to become a prosecutor. I'll stay in Lord Van Zeek's tutelage for the time being, but before long... I intend to be just as formidable as the Reaper himself. Mine's oh, the killing part. I see. Actually, Ryunosuke, I have a favor to ask. Name it. I'd like you to take care of this for me for a while. Oh, fucking finally, dude. I've been waiting for this. I thought for sure he's going to give it back to me a while ago. No, finally. Give me that fucking sword. It's mine now. Karuma? Why? Because I've seen it now. I've seen what's inside me. The demon that reared its ugly head that day. Ah. 
It was only for the briefest of moments. The last time I came face to face with that inspector, but it was unmistakable. I wanted to kill him. I've always known there are demons that live inside people. And now I know there is one in me. The fact that it very nearly consumed me is something I'll carry with me until the end of my days. While I devote my life to fighting those whose demons have got the better of them. As a prosecutor. So, that's what you've resolved to do, is it? Until I'm ready to face the demon within me. To slay it once and for all. I leave this in your care. If you'll take it. Of course I will. I'll keep it by my side. Always. Until we meet again, then. You have your path to follow, and I have mine. Um... Naruhodo-san? The path you're going to follow from now on... I wonder if I might follow it at your side, and unless I'd be a burden. Oh, hell yeah, you come here, girl! I, I mean... I... I w would very much like you to come with me. But... but aren't you...? <laughs> You're so predictable, Renosuke. I am? Honestly, you never change at all. But that's what I like about you. You... you mean you knew about this? It was the evening after Lord Van Zeek's trial came to an end. She came to see me at the prosecutor's office. Really? Oh, when I had that conversation with Professor Mikotoba. So, you'd go with Rinosuke back to Japan? Yes. I know it's unfair of me to follow my own interests like this. Coming here especially to tell me. <laughs> You're a stickler for etiquette, aren't you? Well? What are his feelings? We've never discussed it, of course, and Naruhodo-san has made no such suggestion. I worry that perhaps I'd be a burden to him. He's just as much of a stickler for etiquette as you are. He'd never say anything before he was asked. But I'd feel happy knowing you were with him. Look out for him on my behalf, will you? What, what do you think, Naruhodo-san? With you by my side, no trial would seem too daunting. Aww. So if you're willing, I'd be honored if you'd come with me. Together we can take on the world. I'm terribly incompetent, but if you'll have me, I'd be delighted. Oh, no, no, not at all. I, if anyone's terribly incompetent, it's me. Ah! What's wrong? Your luggage, Susato-san. There's no time. The ship's going to set sail any minute now. Uh, it's all right. There's no need to worry. As it happens, my luggage is already on board, too. Already knew. <laughs> it's already there. <laughs> Your fine judicial assistant has everything in hand as always, I see. I'm glad you said agreed to this, otherwise it would have been really awkward. Back to ref, we're on the boat to get it. Rio, your ship's about to leave. <gasps> Iris speaks. Time to go then. Look after yourself, Runosuke. I love you. Draw your sword. Draw your blade. We're gonna anime clash.
Now let's gingerly touch tips. One day, when our paths cross, once more, we'll fight a duel, a duel of words across the courtroom. A day I eagerly await as a lawyer. I've been waiting to hear you say that, partner. Cool. Don't forget me then, Kazuma. As if I could, Brianosuke. And Mr. Sholmes, thank you so much. I'm very much indebted to you. That was cool lighting. Indeed, Mr. Narahodo. I believe you are. <laughs> I'll never forget all you've done for me during my time in London. Quite. I should like to think you will remember your debt of gratitude. Especially when I visit you in your country. What? The truth is, although many are ignorant of the fact, the world is far smaller than most folk realize. Well, I'd be delighted if you came to Japan one day. Oh, yes! We'd welcome you with open arms, Mr. Sholmes. Oh, that sounds wonderful! I can't wait! Oh. In that case, let us conclude that this is to be merely a brief parting, my dear fellows. And that brings us to the end of my adventures in Great Britain. Ah. A peculiar twist of fate brought me halfway around the world those many months ago. But that was just the start of my journey. Who knows where fate will lead me next? Still, I'm confident this won't be my last meeting with the friends I've made in London. And when we're together again. No doubt, the first words I'll hear will be... Come, the game is afoot! The ship, with our friends from the east, sailed steadily towards the distant horizon. But Sholmes's face was alight with joy. The times may change, but a steadfast friendship will remain true, Wilson. We have but to gently close, close our, our eyes, eyes, and we, we are, are with our, our companions, companions once, once more. Aww. So, so I, I do, do just, just that. And when I do, I can hear his strong, familiar voice ring out. Objection! <laughs> I knew, I was like... Until we meet again, Bruno! We can't, no, we can't end with a game as a foot. No, we must end with an objection. God damn, dude. Fuck me, dude. Man, whoa. Oh, I've been thoroughly inundated a day with inquiries about my remote cinematograph since that day. But I'm no purveyor of electrical goods. We don't promise close call secrecy. Anyway, I've decided an absence from London is in order. A social of distant climes. The Empire of Japan, perhaps. I understand that wardrobe class incurs no charge whatsoever. That's right. You gotta show up. There's gotta be a DGS3. You gotta do it, Holmes. Only you can make it happen. I gave a little note to Holmesy the other day. It just said, thank you for everything, Daddy. But it made Holmesy cry. <laughs> and I gave him some lotion I invented as well to dye his hair red safely. But he said that might make him cry too, so he'd rather not use it. <laughs> Daddy's a big meanie. <laughs> In those days when I was known as the Reaper, I felt your presence at my side. 
Once, unable to bear the burden of that grim pseudonym, I even retired from the courtroom. Despite everything, I still wear your prosecutor's badge with pride. But the darkness that once beset me is no more, as you too are no more. In the words of a young foreign friend of mine, I must stride forward toward a brighter future. Hell yeah, Fizzies! Hell yeah, Daddy Six and your big ass leg! Oh, the boss has left a note for me, you know? I can read every letter now! A to Z! The old law! It's clear a load of, load of stuff up! The boss was trying to protect me, see? And that's exactly what being Chief Inspector Toby here gonna do, keep on doing for London at. Aww. Oh. I only wish I could have said how grateful I was before he, you know. Oh, oh, why'd you just say that, that part of the sad note? They really need to clean up outside that tower. Jesus. Well, I guess I'm dead. Tina, truth is, I'm not the upset fellow you think I am. You might be a diamond hawk, but it's a good hawk. You remind me I need to be true to myself. I've got one more job to take care of before it's Delta to London Town for the foreseeable. And then, I've got to complete your education in the art of detection. Hello, Gregson, as they say. Ah, interesting. Is he talking to himself or it's like his last moment with her? I'm a ghost. <laughs> That's what is happening. I'm a fucking ghost. Bugga, bugga, bugga. I'm going to haunt you, Holmes. I am here. Your Excellency, this man is accused of illegal entry to the office of the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Objection! A blank overstatement overruled the Minister has been detained in Britain anyway! Who is this kind of castle with an event? And we're not framing it into the courtroom! Oh, really? My friend's just decides in the British courtroom all the time. Do a wonderful job! Oh, I look like shit. Perhaps I should have engaged the services of a regular legal team. Uh, I'm still here, though, damn it! I saw she lives on! Ah! <laughs> My legacy lives. Oh! <laughs> I can't wait to see what versions of me spawn out. Hello, honey. Mama, is it true about Japanese people? Are they experts at filleting corpses? Yes, they are fish corpses on the whole. I'd like to hone my own filleting skills. You don't mind, do you, Mama? Yes, I do. I'm not a corpse yet, am I? <laughs> mm, not yet. No. And I'm glad. Uh, all right, visiting hours are over. Get out of here, weirdo. I've actually been enjoying my time without you here. <laughs> you always freak me out a little bit, honey. I'm being honest. I know, Mama. That's why I love you. Here I am again in Great Britain on the invitation of my dear old university friend. He sent me a very nice letter saying that he'd like to show me around now that everything was settled. But what have I done? I was so excited I picked this up splendid hotel and I can't afford the bill. Oh, Barack, come to my rescue again, please. I, I wish I could just vanish into thin air sometimes. Poor fro scientist. <laughs> this man's amazing fro. We'll take the, the science, science world by storm. Oh, God. When I went to make the waxwork impression of the killer in the cemetery, I realized what had happened. But even in the witness stand of the highest court in the land, I could never speak of The Lord Chief Justice and I had to struck a bargain, you see. For a faithful reproduction of the visage, there is nothing we two spells would not do. It's funny, I actually thought she might show up at the end of the, the last trial there, you know, because it's really to tie back again to the cemetery. Aw, oh, poor Vigil. Hey, everyone calls me gossip. I said, don't need a tidbit to pass by, as you know. Hey, everyone calls me Pepina. Now I sell it the spaghetti. It's a modern red in my head. <laughs> Everyone's sick called me. No, no, I cannot do it. This is ridiculous. Oh, Dally, how charming. 
you've made lots of new friends here, I see. <laughs> we share the same cell. Yes. When we were released, we're all going to strike it rich together. Ah. <laughs> uh, but when is that going to be again? In 50 years. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that guy ate spaghetti in there? I'm still on this dock. When I was accepted on the foreign study tour, I knew exactly what path I had to take. And however it may, might have ended, I knew that I wanted you there to see it. If I'd ended up in the dock, there's no one I would have rather had defending me. But now, thanks to you, there's a new path I want to take. I'm sure we'll meet again in the courtroom, my friend. Until then, I leave Karama in your care. Whatever, so you're my sin of bitch now. You're right. I am your sin of bitch. The ultimate character arc concludes. I missed some teen hour, Hoda san. It's important that you rest while well, you can. Yeah, we gotta continue that makeout session from earlier. Once we arrive in Japan, you know, she'll be busy in establishing your new office. I'm so delighted to be accompanying you. After all, your talents have been recognized by a great detective. Because you really are the grace of lawyers. A great ace attorney, some might say. Oh god, she said it! She said the thing! She said the thing! Roll credits! Oh wait, we're already in the credits. Oh, the Dharma's got both eyes. Yes. Yes. Oh, my God. There's Mr. Kitty. She's still fucking crying. Of course she is. We're all sobbing. Aw. Oh. D. And. All right. Yeah. This is actually just like how the uh, first game ended, too. We're, all, we're gonna walk down the line. I'm gonna walk into my friends and be on our way. Oh my god! Suzuto in her cute little Naruto outfit. I'm here, too! Oh my god, the cats! Now let's see all the people we met along the way. <laughs> god damn, dude. Fuck me, man. This game was f incredible. It was actually, like, incredible. Oh my god. It's like wow. So yeah, I think it's pretty needless for me to say at this point. But yeah, this is definitely billion percent is my favorite game in the series. And I would almost say like by a massive margin even, which is amazing because I already thought the Eastern Investigations 2 was so fucking good and it still is. Like, an incredible game. But goddamn, dude, if this game doesn't, like, just go to, like, some other level that I literally didn't think was possible for this series. Where, like, every single case of this game was so good. Every single, every single one. There wasn't a dud. Was not a dud. There wasn't one like, well, that was kind of weaker. Every single one of these games, or one of these cases felt like a final case game. Like, it was so fucking good. Like, not just like, oh, a little bit. No, everyone, everyone. I didn't think it was possible. I didn't. I actually thought I was like, nah, man, you know, maybe just, it's just we have to sort of settle that. There's going to be at least maybe one case that's kind of like, not that great. Every single one was amazing. I can't even tell. I don't even know if I can tell you which one I thought was my favorite. I love them all so, so much. To have that level of quality spread equally across every one of these cases is just like my boggling that they managed to pull that off. And that doesn't even go into like, like what made these cases so good i mean the fact that it tied into this overarching narrative and plot so everything sort of played into that right but it was also just the fact that this game was so supremely insanely written like i actually mean insanely written because this game had some fucking passion behind it man oh god Jigoku, don't hit me with the hammer like just an absolutely insane level of passion and love so much thought so much fucking thought.
like the the nuances that the story took the twists and turns to the, to the even to the very end where you'd like just couldn't even see where things would be going you know that all the way to the end that kept you guessing the fact that characters reacted in realistic ways and didn't do the usual stupid ace attorney oh, i don't know what they're talking about mm, i better work my way towards it or oh whatever this thing means you know it's like oh and it makes you just kind of go, okay all right you know, like I become so used to it to actually see it not happen in this game. Just was like, what the, what? And it takes a level of confidence in your story, right? Uh, a level to, that you can actually have your characters question your own plot structure, your own uh, plot points. You're actually, that someone that is willing to do that and is able to do that, well, one, it leads to a more interesting story because that's, it's hard to do that and write it well and not like, you know, Ha almost in a way have the characters call out your own bullshit and two it shows just an absolute insane confidence in the narrative and they have every right to, to have that confidence because this narrative was incredible great ace attorney 2 resolve Finn oh my god that is the sickest fucking picture Wow, look at that. That's awesome. What a cool picture. I wish I could make that a thumbnail, but unfortunately it's just a Sugi and that's kind of a giant spoiler. I'm on the dock. I'm still on the dock. Let's go check the special stuff real quick. Let's just glance over this. All my accolades. That's a lot I missed though. Holy crap. Right, some of these are probably from the, uh, yeah. The first game for having read every new idea on Iris's blackboard. I guess that maybe maybe it counted the first game too. I was pretty sure I did that. For having named Takesu Sushi Ouchi and Yuji Mikoto as the victim and they was oh that's funny. At the start, actually I think it's right. I think you guys actually may have even told me that. That was like you get a trophy you could get. Yeah, I can look at all the portraits and not have to worry about being spoiled. Wow, look at that Naruto with glasses. Look at all those varying hairstyles. Nowhere near as diverse as they are today. They were either cropped, short, short, side parted, or swept back. Wow. From the very first proposals. Actually, not too far from what it actually ended up being, which is funny. Cool cape. We never really got to see that cape again, though, did we? Karuma. Miss Susito. Miss Susito, what did you used to look like? This is what she arrived in as well. Oh, my God. You looked really different, actually. Surprise, Susito face. Holmes? Almost has such a cool outfit, man. Such a cool design. <laughs> Goggles, which he occasionally put down. Oh, here we go. I was like, is there like a... Yeah, here we go. Wow. That was a really rough one. De definitely kept the steampunk inspiration. Iris. Oh, wow. Look at that. Is that what kind of the this, this sketch looks like? A little bit. A little bit more than that. She had a hat. Yeah. I like her new design better. This, this one is cute, but... Yeah, this one is a little sweeter. I don't know. He's got a little hard hair. Oh my god! This is definitely a bit closer to what she actually ended up being. Cute. Kazuma. Holy shit, he's have possibly possibly having glasses. Aha! I'm so beautiful. Daddy Zeke's. Holy shit! Whoa, damn, Van Zeke went through quite a few, didn't he? Ugh. I'm glad they didn't go with those. Oh, actually, the one on the right there looks kind of cool. One on the right looks just... That was just Alucard. That actual one, he's actually just Alucard. Ooh. Uh, not so much. No, that's, that one looks way better. Hell yeah. I make this shit look good, boy. Look at all these variety of people. Strongheart. Strongheart was a great fucking design, too. He's basically like what Damon Gant was, but better. <laughs> in my opinion. No. Hey! All right. Oh, yes. Yeah, so I just complete this one, though, to get it. Get that one, but... Brothers of the Dawn, I turn to the iconic final scene at daybreak between Rinosuke and Kazuma for inspiration in this symbolic illustration of their parting of ways. That's so cool. Ah, it'd be a great thumbnail for the final finale, but unfortunately it's also insanely spoilery, so I won't do it. Holy shit. Oh, these are like the DLC outfits. Yeah. Hers is, well, damn, so, so yours is crazy. <laughs> and then Holmes is just, is kind of bizarre, but it's like, I get it. Like he's going the Japanese style. Damn, look at that look on that fucking, Damn, look how cool Van Zeke's looks in this. Look at that. Looks so dope. Hello, it's me. Here's the gi giant picture of a spoiler. Uh, hey, some 
fans some uh, Clint uh, images that we didn't see very much. What the hell? Look at that one before. The, <laughs> he's over there stretching his leg. Oh, look at little baby Barack. And there's the dog. You know, the murder dog. Get uh, Sogi's father, Genshin, with and without the stash. As you see, his uh, initial design wasn't too different from what they actually went with. Again, just really fucking cool looking, wasn't he? Uh, oh, interesting. Holmes and Mikotoba there. Mikotoba looking a bit different. Yeah, I like that. Damn, they made him look like a lot. Yeah, actually, oh, maybe that is him. Oh, is that is that actually him when he was younger? It actually might be. I don't know, though. His eye, eyebrows look different. I think this might just be a... Oh, wait. I might just read this. Uh, Yuji Mikotoba. Surprising past is finally resolved, resolved. Of course, all of his backstory has been set during the fir game, first game's development. So everything I'm about to share... Finally, finally share I drew during my time on adventures. Oh, it is. I think. Because you see Baby Iris. Yeah, maybe that's just him when he's younger. Cool. Uh. Okay, we got Ray, Osanaga, uh. Jigoku with his massive head. Ouchie with him without hair. Bumblebee Man. Juno Stride. That douche guy on the right, I mean. Uh, Drebber. Drebber was pretty cool, too. Great designs in this game, man. So my little uh, little boy actually uh, in the balloon guy didn't really play in the mu as much as I thought they would. I thought, might, I thought it might be more to them, but nah, not really. Caden, a piece of shit. Holy shit! Look at wow. They even, he even drew his freak out of uh, Strongheart and, and his and his uh, subsequent roasting. Lord Chief Justice in result meant that I could finally draw him fully as I envisioned in my very first designs. Taking his rifle place in the story. That's cute. That's cool. So this is, this is actually in his initial designs, huh? He's been sitting on this for quite a while then. <gasps> oh my God, little chippy versus everybody. <laughs> Look at the little chunky baby versus everybody. And all the, the cool artwork of first and second game. <laughs> I like it. Strongheart over there, look at, put his arms up at a cross like he's fucking Jesus. Uh, the greatest turning key visual. I worked on, worked to capture the themes, atmosphere, and general sense of the world itself in one illustration that buys the whole of the first game with this piece. It's split roughly into two sections with images of Britain dominating the upper half whilst Japan takes the lead in the lower. From the truly, the uh, fully drawn blade, a great wave rises, lifting Sakura's spells into the English rose ab above. This way I've created an actual line for the eyes to fo follow that also conveys the trajectory of the story as it starts in Japan and shifts to Great Britain. Ryunosuke's face hints at his iron will hidden deep within, while Sister shows the sun and ease. Their expression suggests how the story of the adventures overseas ultimately come to a close. Uh, the second game, Adventures was the first title in the eternity to diverge so greatly from the mainline games in its setting. The key visual for it focused heavily on conveying the period, lo locales, and the general atmosphere of the world itself. However, with Resolve, it was m time to move away from the setting, so the composition of this visual to emphasize the dramatic tale that binds these characters to one another. Yeah, the, a lot, the Japanese really, they put so much thought into so much of like the key visuals and key arts of, of their games. It's like insane, and like the theming and and such. Ryunosuke stands at the center with a look of strong resolve in his eyes while Susuto stands next to him with a wrap draped around her shoulders. It's as though even after they were forced apart, Fate has brought them back together. The top center represents a different time and shimmers with the golden light of a bygone era. From there, the light fit quickly fades into the dark shades of twilight and the moon shifts along with the colors to reflect the relationships between and destinies of each character present. Cherry blossoms, which are often used as a symbol of Japan, swirl around them like an embrace of a strong or a strong gust of wind. The ephemeral nature of Sakura is layered upon the top a metaphor that petals that had fallen to the ground in adventures will be swept into the air again by the resolve of a gust of wind, or perhaps headwind in Rinosuke's case. All in all, I've painted a lot of meaning to these illustrations from each character's placement to the overall composition of colors for you to discover once you've finished the game. So who knows? Perhaps you might even find something new. I also meant for this to be a companion piece for the to the key visual for adventure, so it'd make my day if you were to let your imagination run wild as you view the two pieces side by side. Cool. Aw. Thank you. I'm personally fascinated with the design and illustrations where I can catch a glimpse of thinking behind his form and details. It's been an absolute joy for me to share even a sliver of my thought process here with you. Thank you so much for reading. At the very end, art director and character designer, Kazuya Nuri. Goddamn. The designs of this game were fucking great. Moving pictures. The trailers and stuff. Spe special trial. Oh, that's funny. The Phoenix. Actually, I think I might have seen that a long time ago. Um, this is all the music. Oh, voice styles and the instrumentals. Actually, does it actually have every song in the game? Sure looks like it. Oh, wait, even sound effects from the vaults. Oh, unused sound songs? Oh, that's funny. It's a lot of songs, at least. So it's not all of them. It's a lot of them. Yeah, so there's the DLC outfits. Cute. 
Oh, I didn't realize it's actually only available in the second game. Huh. I did not, I did not realize that. Here's a short story. I know some of you guys were like, I oh, check these out, Nika. Here's the problem is these were these are all basically related to the first game. Um, so it's like I just at at this point I just don't I don't have a lot of desire to check it out. I'm sorry to say. As much as I love this game, I also feel like a weird step back after everything we've gone through. And I kind of like I like the feeling the finality of the conclusion of these games without having to go back and like you know I mean I'm sure there's some nice little tidbits or details in there, but but um. Yeah, guys, this game was unbelievably good. So good. In fact, this game is so good that I legit think this it, this game is as close to perfect for the Ace Attorney as I think you could possibly get. Like legit. I, I don't really have anything to criticize in the game, which is insane. Like, I, I, I don't have anything, man. The music was so great. The art direction and uh, fucking dialogue was great. Just the story was incredible. The characters were amazing. Every character. I loved every character in, in this game. Um, and I love the main cast. I think I love them more than any cast of characters from any of the other Ace Attorney games. I mean, this game has made me give so much of a shit about them. It almost makes me like, the thing is, as much as I would love to have a, a, another game in this series, and I do. I definitely do, because I want to see what they do. But I almost almost doubt that they could pull this off again because despite them you know sort of leaving the expectation or option open for another game right i just feel this whole narrative feels so like contained right like this whole like tightly woven narrative between the two games as it really has just been this continuous story that is always relating to the same main points right and the main main story arc it was so like well put together that I almost wonder if could, could they do that like so clearly this game was was something that has been in the works for a long time right it had to have been to have, have this much detail and uh thought and effort put into every one of its plot points it's staggering amount of plot points and how all of its crazy themes that you guys have even po helped point out to me things that I didn't even hit me initially like like that shit is insane like like it, it just it shows that they absolutely have been putting a fuck ton of effort into this and i in my opinion this has got to be the team's magnum opus game like really like i just i can't imagine it getting better than this i mean i'd love to be proven wrong but i'll be fucking damned if if the next phoenix right game comes anywhere near as um, incredible as this game was and i'm just being honest in my opinion the characters in this game are miles ahead of a lot of the characters in Phoenix Wright, and that includes Phoenix himself. Even Apollo, dude. I love Apollo, but I honestly like Naruhodo more than Apollo. Edgeworth was a really good fucking character. If I had to compare prosecutors, I mean, I don't know. It's kind of hard because Edgeworth ended up getting his own games as well. If that didn't happen, I might not be like as... You know, it's like hard when I pick Van Zeeks over Edgeworth. I don't know, man. Van Zeeks is really great, but I think Van Zeeks needs his own spinoff He's so fucking good. I mean, I, I love Edgeworth, but goddamn, I also really like Van Zix in this game. And so how they ended up doing uh, Sogi's character as well. But that's sort of like the thing. Like the characters themselves are also so tied to the narrative that they set up. Like a Sogi's own reason for coming here. Like if they had a third game, would they be able to get to that same, that same feeling, right? That same like insanely tightly woven narrative of character, uh, character motivations and stuff that all tie together that they did here. I don't know. I don't know. It could end up just devolving into what Ace Attorney kind of ended up, I think, sort of turning into in some ways, where it's like, hey, we're off on another adventure together that's, you know, not really tied to anything we've done beforehand. And basically all of our characters are kind of reset to how they how, how they were, right? Like there's no feeling of character growth, um, which I definitely wouldn't want to see. Um, and I think that's the other thing about this game that I I can't say for a lot of the other ones about the other Ace Attorney games is that they have real character growth. Like there's not this weird like whiplash of like Phoenix turns into a hobo, uh, but also like a master of his craft that parts his wisdom and oh wait, no, he's back to being a defense lawyer thing. And like, I mean, he's still like a an experienced defense lawyer, but he's still using the same stupid shit of turning your thicket around and booga booga booga. And who ended up getting the most growth was probably Apollo, but even then, I would still say it's it wasn't nearly as satisfying as it was here. Like, this really just feels like the ultimate Ace Attorney game. And I guess I have to sort of include the first game as well, even though I had my gripes with that first case, and I still will. I will always have gripes with the first, cases, uh, first case of the first game.
But in this game, dude, I've got... I have no gripes with it. I have no fucking gripes. I, well, I do have one thing. I do have one thing. This is not, it's not actually really directed specifically towards this game, but it's actually more towards the, the series as a whole. And it has to do with the, the writing style. I will say, it's a really good thing that I didn't have another what do you mean counter <laughs> this game. Because I swear to you, this game probably said the phrase what do you mean five times as many times as the fucking Scarlet Study version did. Uh, this just, again, it makes me go, I really fucking wish I didn't do that <laughs> when I first played through this game. And I just, I, if I haven't said it, I, I didn't say it before, and I will say it again. I'm really sorry to Scarlet Study for, for that. Like, like, seriously, did you see how many times they said it in this game? It was insane. And a lot of it has to do with the fact of how they, there are certain Ace Attorneyisms, I would call, that they sort of fall into that I, I kind of wish they'd sort of pull back on at least a little bit. But ones are the the what do you means and like literally like forward forward what do you mean god they said so much in this game it was insane and they probably said it a bunch in previous games too i just didn't pay attention to it but now that i've seen it i'm like oh god i can't unsee it but other things include for example the uh what i call the the uh the build up where like they go uh wait you don't mean that's right i do mean blah, blah, blah. like they, they do that a lot too in this game and i can get it sometimes especially from a gameplay perspective if it's leading to like um you know wait you don't mean that's right and then you pick your option but a lot of times they, it wasn't that it was just literally like like we're just gonna do that again wait you don't mean they do this so many times in this game too and there's just like a lot of things like that that like it's a style but it is it's something that i feel like they maybe rely on it a bit too much and it's not just this game that's guilty of that i think it's every ace attorney game if i were to go back now with all of my experience with these with these series and play the older games i probably would start noticing it even more um and it's again it's just a lot of it has to do with the fact that i played so many of these games so that like these things don't escape me anymore just from a writing perspective in terms of like actual like habits like that i feel like can start to wear down a narrative if it's done if done too much um fortunately the this game's narrative was so fucking good that i didn't really care that much that's why it's really not like a huge critique especially in this game's instance it's more of a nitpick than anything some would probably consider it a style and would be honestly pissed that it was gone it's it's very much an opinion kind of thing i, I don't expect everyone to agree with me on that and honestly i wouldn't want this game to be written by anybody else but the people that made this game or made any or made or wrote this story because it was just so good so like if i had to sacrifice another game where they do all the same you know what do you mean and uh, what do you mean blah, blah, like the same ace attorney isms just get another th uh, third game of this series fucking i'll take it dude i don't give a fuck all right you can say that shit till you're red in the face all right and i will be all right with it again very much a nitpick and not something that applies to just this game <sighs> fuck dude it's like this game's gonna sue me for a long time though like this legit might be one of my favorite games i've ever played like i'm not even joking i had so much fucking fun playing through this game and voicing all of its wonderful characters like damn dude damn um really really incredible experience that uh it's it was like it felt like I, I feel a lot of ways when i had fun with 13 Sentinels, where i just got to the end and i was just like fuck dude i like i went through a fucking journey man a journey that is like so rare to experience that has so much fucking love and effort put into it that you just feel it right every moment of the game you just feel it um and it's such a goddamn fucking cool feeling to have because to see that level you know it's a rare thing it's surprisingly a rare thing to come across in any work of fiction so when you see it it's and feel it it's truly inspiring honestly that's what this this game does it inspires me man i hope that one day i can reach the levels that this game does you know in anything that i do just fuck, man 10 out of 10 12 out of 10 this game is my favorite game in the series by a fucking large margin so I think that means it now, now that I've actually, actually at this point, I have now finished every single one of the Ace Attorney games, not counting the crossover, but I'm not counting that. All right. I'm sorry. All right. I don't have any intention to play the crossover anytime soon because I haven't played a Professor Layton game. I'm sure it's fine, but I, I supremely doubt it's as good as this game. Okay. I doubt it. And if anyone says that it is, I'm not going to believe them. But out of the games I played, 
I think my order now is, I think my least favorite one is still Ace Attorney Investigations 1. Um, then Justice for All. Uh, then I think Dual Destinies? I think it's usually where, I, yeah, I think probably Dual Destinies would be the next one. Then the first Ace Attorney game. Then Spirit of Justice. Then the third Ace Attorney game, Trials and Tribulations. I usually put Apollo Justice really high. Would I still say that? Uh, would I put over Trials and Tribulations, though? No, I think I'd probably say Trials and Tribulations over Apollo Justice, at least at this point. I don't know if that's what I said before. So, so no, it would be a Spirit of Justice, then Apollo Justice, then uh, Trials and Tribulations. The Great Ace Attorney uh, Adventures, I guess, the first game. Uh, then Ace Attorney Investigations 2, and then The Great Ace Attorney 2. I think that'd be my list. Yeah, it's hard to believe I played so many of these Ace Attorney games. I've been doing playing Ace Attorney games since like it's the first, first time I played the first game was like in 2014 or 2015, like like six or seven years, man. Like holy shit, I've been doing this for a while. I was like seriously, go back and watch the, like, the first Ace Attorney game compared to how like I sound now. It's like I sound significantly different. It's uh, it's kind of funny, but it's, it's sort of cool to watch. I feel like the games grow as we play them. You know, it's really been a delight to experience these games, and I. I really do hope that, you know, while I, I do worry <laughs> that this series will never be able to reach the heights this game is, because this game truly was just some some next level insane shit to me. I do hope that that isn't this isn't the end of the Ace Attorney series, right? Whether whether it is with the great Ace Attorney cast of characters I'd love to see come back, or whether it's even Phoenix Wright and, and those guys themselves, I'd, I'd still like to see what they can, what else they can do, or hell, even a brand new cast of characters, you know? I still wanna see further where this game series can go. Um, so I, I do hope that there's still more to come uh, in Ace Attorney's future. But all right, guys, thank you so, so much for joining me on this crazy fucking adventure. I, I really hope you all enjoyed this game, this LP, as much as I did, because it really, like, this is going to go down as, that's one of my favorite games, one of my favorite Let's Plays. I had so much fun Let's Playing this game. So much fun voicing the characters, so just thank you. Thank you guys so much. You guys made this so much more enjoyable, like you always do. With all the things you shared about the game's, like, themes, too, just goddamn, really just made me just love the fuck out of this game. Uh, even more than I would have if I played it, you know, casually. So thank you guys. If you did, please leave a like and a favorite though uh, on this video and this series. It really does help me out a lot more than you probably guys even realize. And hey, if you're not already, why not subscribe to become a picky penguin aboard this SSLP, where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. And uh, we have a lot of fun here. <laughs> we have a lot of really fucking fun times and goddamn incredible adventures through some games like this game or 13 Sentinels or fucking Final Fantasy or Don Roper. Fuck me, dude. We got so many. It's games like this that just make me love the fuck out of what I do. So seriously, guys, thank you so, so much for sticking with me with this series. I can't wait to see what crazy adventures we uh, get into next because I guess we'll have to... We got another Let's Play we're going to have to hop into now, right? Brand new Let's Play. I don't know if I'll have any one-offs or not. I, I might. I might have some one-offs in between now and the, the next series, but uh, we'll, we'll have to see. So, And as always, Picky Penguins... Till next time, guys, stay classy!